Uh, good morning. Today we're going to show how to convert a wafer map file that came from the UF3000 by Tokyo Simitsu or Acrotech. This map file is in binary format. What that means is that if you open this file in a text editor, you're going to see mostly gobbledygook. You might see a little bit of ASCII strings, but basically the data is in a stream of bits and can't be read with any kind of a regular text editor. So we've written the translator to convert that into a text file. To run the program, start up Wafer Map Converter, set your input format to UF3000, and then select your file. Because it has no extension, we'll go star.star, .star, and let's accept the first one. You see that there's different types of devices that we can pull out of that file. Zero means not tested or skipped. One would be a good die, two would be a fail die of type one, and three would be a fail die of type two. You can see there's none of the three category, but we still create that. If we're translating to a format like SIMF, these are not legitimate values, so we would have to get it to change that. One way to do that is to change this to underscore underscore. The good die would be 0, 1. Bad die might be 0, B. And uh, this would be 0, C. Now this information here has been picked up by scanning the file. We're going to create first a DXF so we can see what it looks like and then we'll also create a SIMF at the same time. Let's call the output file 21B7 and I'll click convert. You can see here that it produced both the SIMP file and the DXF. Let's look at the SIMP first. So it picked up internally from the file the device name, a lot number, a wafer number. This is the location of the flat the number of rows, number of columns. This is simply a list of good die, and 01 is a good die in the scheme of things. References don't make any sense, so we left those off. This particular file we asked for in units of microns, and this is the step size in X and Y. After we finish with that header, we have the row data, so these are essentially the non-existent or skip devices. You need them in order to make sure your array is square, and then you can see along the edge of the wafer the 0B or unacceptable bad die, either because they're on the edge or because they're tested bad, and the 01s are the good die. All right, if you scan down that, you'll see that we have the entire wafer. You can also see notches in the side and flat on the bottom. Now let's look at the layout. Here's the layout in uh, AutoCAD. And what we've done is we've put each cell, the unique cell, on a different layer. You see that the cell underscore underscore is these cyan ones. 0, 1 are good ones, and the 0, Bs are pink ones. We also asked the program to draw us some crosshairs and a way for outline. If we turn off, say, the cells like this, we can see how it fits in. Now, this particular data did not have useful offset information, so all we could do was place the array approximately in the location it should be. That's probably not entirely correct because you wouldn't expect to see those die leaking out on the bottom side. This is an arbitrary margin. We entered a, a 3000 micron margin. But anyway, for most purposes of documentation, this is uh, quite good. And if you need to move that array, you can do so quite easily if you know how far it's offset. So that's a quick demonstration of converting the binary UF3000 into ASCII and into a layout that can be used for documentation. Thank you very much.